might be the hardest video I've ever made in my life. This is just like picking your favorite special needs child that you own. You know, it's, this is gonna be difficult. I put together this tier list. I've been wanting to do this for a while, actually. My buddy Ross put me onto the idea of doing it for every chapter, but I figured let's just start with Half-Life 1. This is gonna be divisive. You know, this is just my thoughts, my, my opinions. There might be some chapters that I put higher than others simply from nostalgia, and I'm gonna try and disconnect from that a little bit, but it's gonna be tricky. Uh, let's hop in, I'll give my thoughts, and then you guys can take the tier list yourselves, which I have linked down below, and uh, we can make this uh, one big hellscape of an argument. So let's, let's hop in. All right, anomalous materials. Anomalous materials What a great chapter in my opinion it sets the stage so well and at the time Anomalous materials is the perfect lube for the rest of the game, right? It, it was sort of unseen at that time Just you felt like you were a part of something real to some extent not a lot happens But it's kind of cool the little interactions that you have with the, the scientists um, And it's cool to see the before the disaster so that it's almost like you have a little bit more investment in things going to shit right because you've seen the facility from the eyes of an employee first so it's just fun man like it's, it's just kind of cool wandering around now i just zoomed through it but i remember just being like whoa i I'm white collar at a military in installation, so for that reason, I gotta give anomalous materials a B. And I, I reserve the right to, at the end, make a couple of adjustments here. But for now, I'm gonna go with anomalous materials being a B. Oh, but hold on, the Black Mesa incident happens during it. Oh shit. That almost makes it S tier. Does that feel right? I'm gonna put it in A right now. A for anomalous materials. It's perfect. Let's. It's a great chapter, and because of the Black Mesa incident and the actual Resonance Cascade happening in it, I forgot about that part. That definitely bumps it up, and I'm questioning making that one S tier. But I have a feeling I'm gonna rank all of these really high, so I'm, I'm trying to be reserved. Okay. Oh shit. Speaking of being reserved. I, I, okay, so questionable ethics. Um, questionable ethics for me is an easy S tier. Let me tell you why, okay? You're deep into the Black Mesa incident. You're on, I think you're on day two or maybe even three at this point. You've battled through hell and back and there's still this mystery of like, what the hell was going on at this facility, right? Black Mesa, um, you know, they've been, you've seen some stuff, like they've been experimenting, like you've seen the resonance cascade, you've seen the anti-mass spectrometer, the big old machine that sort of started all this, but you, you haven't really seen a lot of the other experiments that have been taking place. You haven't really been in the labs much since the beginning of the game. And you might have passed through certain areas of labs, but not really. I think the this is your first foray back into sort of the high-tech lab area where you, you uncover real dark secrets. You realize that they've been uh, kidnapping. <laughs> they've been capturing alien grunts, right? You, right when the chapter starts, you see one in like a big test tube. They've been studying these things. You go, whoa. Like, they knew about the aliens. Like, it wasn't like we just tapped into the alternate reality and the dimensions just shit themselves all over us. We've been studying these things. You're like, oh, there's like that mystery to it. And as you go further along, you finally have all your guns again, kind of, which is awesome. And there's a good mix of alien combat, HECU marine combat in an interior way, or an interior, um, design elements it's not like surface tension which is just all outside we'll get to that one but it's all 
cloaked in this mystery of uncovering this lab of alien experimentation. And there's multiple experiments happening and lasers and you have to use that laser to blow open that wall with the metal shield to find the scientists that are deep in the lab to let you out onto the surface i mean shit man that's what it's all that's what half-life's all about in my opinion little mystery combat you know what more could i ask for for me that's an easy s tier okay black mesa inbound black mesa inbound <clears throat> hmm. Legendary at its time. Now a bit of a slog, but still cool. The background track is awesome. It's cool seeing again the facility before the disaster. Uh, but it, it serves as an intro, and you're kind of trapped in that tram the whole time listening to that doll of a woman uh, over the intercom. The, the, the time is 8. 27 a.m. You know, still really cool, but it ain't. It's it's just an intro. So for that, I'm just gonna have to give it a B. Oh, gosh, this feels so dirty. Oh, dirty! I'm so dirty. It's like I want to give everything kind of like an A or an S. So I'm I'm trying to be fair here. Okay, good intro, but it's just a tram ride through a top secret research facility damn that makes it sound cool it is cool forget about freeman Ooh. forget about freeman hmm i gotta go i'm gonna put it in c for a second here let me tell you why okay um this is a part of the game where you can feel the slog of a of a development cycle in game design okay there are areas in this chapter that are giant empty rooms with a tank in the middle of it now to be fair cool cool set piece we have to you know all the aliens are teleporting in and you gotta use the tank to blow open the the, the gate if you know what i'm talking about it, it's but there's certain areas in the design where you can tell like they were just like, oh, we gotta get through this, we gotta make another level. And the care, I don't think, was fully there for it. Are there cool moments in Forget About, the, in Forget About Freeman? Let's be honest, yes. And by the way, where's my F tier? There we go. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm not a great tier list maker, apparently. I, I now have an F, okay? Um, back to what I was saying. I just felt like at that stage in the game, there's certain areas that are dragging. We've already been through surface tension. We've been through so much military. There's some cool stuff that happens in Forget About Freeman, like the Garg chase uh, when the Gargantua was chasing you through the 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 you know the uh, I don't know whatever it is underground parking thing. And they do have that airstrike moment, but I feel like it was a little rushed. I feel like there's an element of it that feels a little rushed and for that reason i'm going to give it a c for now we'll see if that changes finger guns okay oh here we go on a rail on a rail okay so this one is a divisive chapter for a lot of people some people really like it some people really hate it okay my first instinct is that, for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of On a Rail. Um, that's not to say it doesn't have some redeeming qualities. There is, a, it, it does serve as a nice pressure release after two boss chapters in a row, uh, which was Blast Pit and uh, Power Up. So it, 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 it serves its purpose, you know. That said, is it a little confusing? Maybe, you know. Is there a clear shot to what's happening? No. That's kind of the fun of it to some extent. Uh, I wouldn't say it's awful. Um, I would say that it's okay. Um, I enjoy it better than Forget About Freeman, but I gotta put it in the C tier for me at least. Okay. So Forget About Freeman is the worst C one so far than on a rail um 
It's definitely not as good as any of these other ones. Uh, Blast Pit. Blast Pit. Amazing chapter. Um, a lot of really unique elements within it. Uh, one, badass tentacle monster that'll uh, crush you, eat your face, and, and, and murder your wife, okay? Uh, or husband, you know. And definitely your Barney. Really cool uh, scripted sequence where the tentacle comes through the whoosh, scientist goes Wah! Let go and it drags it out of the window and you're like holy shit. What is this? And you see this big spaghetti monstrosity just gong, 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 gong. And at this point you have maybe let loose in your trousers you are terrified. You're going, what is this green spaghetti thing, Medusa hair bitch, coming out of that black pit? And then you meet the first Barney, and he goes, be quiet, and he hears us. And that's the second element, is it's, it's creative in, in, in the way that, like, it's sound-based. You have to sneak your way through it. Whereas, throughout the rest of the game, you're just making a bunch of noise. Shotguns, and blah, blah, blah. Now you gotta be quiet. You have to, like, crouch and sneak your way you know, to these different silos around this, you know, monster. And you throw grenades to distract it and stuff. And it's really clever in that way. And then it all culminates with you burning the shit out of it. Like, the way you overcook your ramen. And for that reason, I gotta go with S tier. Blast Pit is, a, is an S tier chapter. Replayability, you kind of know what's going on. Maybe it's a little lackluster, but the ideas and the concepts behind it are S tier, in my opinion. Okay, Lambda Core. Ooh, okay. Another one of these chapters that sort of has that mystery element that I'm talking about. So, you're finally getting towards the end of the game, right? And you're you're approaching, you, you've known since we've got hostiles that you need to get to the Lambda Core. In fact, the whole point of this game up to this point is to get to the Lambda Core. So it's kind of the final destination. What are you expecting? Presence with a bow tied around it. No, floating alien bitches that shoot orbs at you during a big sequence trying to activate the teleport to Zen. You go, fuck, right? Lambda Core is awesome. And then, well, that part is definitely awesome. The ending sequence is super dope. And then also, uh, you get the glue on gun. I mean, come on. We get the glue on gun here. By the way, that's why another reason why questionable ethics is awesome. You get the you get the Goss gun, that's fucking awesome. But Lambda Core, you get the glue on gun, and you also are back in the labs, and you you know you're trying to worm your way through these teleporters, which is pretty creative. I would say Lambda Core is an A tier, uh, if I had to choose. Okay, um, and there's a couple other reasons for that, but for brevity's sake. I'm going to put it in A for now. We'll see if that changes. We've got hostiles. <laughs> for God's sake, open the silo door. Right. First introduction to the military. Um, at this point, you think they're coming to save you. But re you realize they're here to exterminate anyone involved in the experiment. Uh, and they are not your friend. And you get the MP5. And you gotta deal with sentry guns. And you gotta shoot Dr. Coomer in the face with it. Um, for that reason, it's an S tier. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, we've got hostiles. Hmm. Cool level or cool chapter. But there's nothing real awesome about it other than a couple of glimpses of the surface, right? You know, I would have to give it a B tier for that reason. Look at that. It's so uh, symmetrical, by the way. I've been... No Ds or Fs so far. We'll have to see. But, yeah, we've got Hostiles. Cool. You get, uh, you know, the MP5. You know, you worm your way through. You fight the, the military. You see a glimpse of G-Man. But, you know, it's, it's nothing incredible. It's solid as filler goes, right? Zen. Zen. 
now we're cooking, right? Now we're at the alien home world dimension snot place. Everything's green as a freshly mowed lawn by your dad when you're a kid. Except for it looks like snot. S tier. I'm just kidding. Um, Zen is a controversial one, right? And I personally don't think Zen is as bad as people remember it. The, the shock and awe of when you first appear in Zen and you got the long jump module. And yeah, there's a bit of platforming. It's not the best platforming, but it's short and it's an introduction to Zen and you feel so alone and distant and friend zoned from earth and all your scientists uh, who you just want to make sweet love with but now you're in a different dimension right and there's manta rays flying around i think it's it gets a lot of hate and i think most people are, are talking more about zen at large as opposed to just chapter zen when they're saying they don't like zen for me zen's gotta be I'm gonna go with B tier for now. It's cool. There's that awe factor. <clears throat> There's the I'm approaching the end of the game. There's it's an alien environment. Gravity's changed. You no longer feel like the the the, the uh, you know the the weight of all the Chick Fil A nuggets you've eaten on Earth. You you're now lighter and you can jump really far. And it's just a change of pace and a, sort of a breather after that big sequence at the end of Lambda Core where you're trying to activate the teleport and the aliens are throwing the energy orbs at you. So I gotta go. B tier for now. Slightly above, we've got hostiles. Okay, now we're talking. So interloper, right? One of the worst chapters in the game, okay? And, and, and I'll tell you why. Um, it's either D or an F. Let's go F, okay? Interloper is where Zen really starts to show, again, that rushed factor, right? <clears throat> that I talked about, forget about Freeman. There's a couple chapters where you can see the rush about it. Now, what's cool about Interloper is the lore behind it and sort of showing how the alien slaves, like the way they fit in the Zenian culture and, and all that stuff and how there's that alien factory. But first level of interloper is some of the most annoying platforming in the game okay if I remember correctly yes 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 it's the first level where it's the pillars that come up and you got to worm your way through a cave get on the little disc platforms you know your little uh, you know platforms that you got to jump across and it doesn't really make sense there's no real clear line of sight you see the end point but it doesn't it's not really clear until you bumble your way through it once you do get through it you're you're treated with a very long arduous sequence of fighting alien grunts and alien slaves and alien controllers and this alien factory a sweatshop if you will and then it culminates in another ending platform sequence as you ascend towards the portal that takes you to the chapter nylanth or Nylanth, whatever <clears throat> sorry mark laidlaw it's it's arduous it's a pain in the ass i don't know anyone personally who says i really love interloper from half-life one um, so for that reason, I'm going to give it an F for now, okay? Um, I never really liked it, so it's 2021, I'm right, that's what matters, that's how this works now, right? Just kidding, okay? Just kidding. Anyways, I'm going to put it in F tier for now, okay? Curious to see your thoughts on Interloper, but I found it really annoying uh, to work my way through. Oh man, and all the little barrels, and you... You have to go through the barrels with the crowbar and then suddenly there's an alien grunt. You know, just like, surprise, motherfucker! And he shoots a hornet in your in your freaking uvula. You know, no good. I'm just kidding, it's, it is what it is. If I had to choose an F chapter, for me personally, I'd go with Interloper, okay? Unforeseen consequences. Unforeseen consequences is awesome in that story building way where it's 
post disaster immediately after the resonance cascade everything's gone to shit you don't know what's happening you know you don't know if you know if you farted well you kind of know what happened well it was the anti-spectrometer went to hell it ripped the dimensional fabric and the, the world's fucked from this point on but you're kind of experiencing that you're going through this now defunct uh crippled facility you don't know what's going you don't know how, who's dead who's not you just you see your first head crab you get the crowbar the elevator of scientists whoop, explodes as you're working your way back up to the lobby so it's anomalous material set the tone unforeseen consequences delivers and it does it in a way that it, it's one of the chapters in half-life one that feels more like a horror game right or a horror experience for that reason i gotta go with a tier okay unforeseen consequences sets the tone for the game generally speaking uh, not a ton happens you get the glock you get a head crab to your face and what more could you ask than that so it's got to go to a tier right <clears throat> office complex this has always been one of my little you know sort of it's like a Britney Spears song. Like I like a, a secret pleasure Guilty Spears song, right? I can listen to Britney Spears. Guilty pleasure. Office Complex, for me, I really like it. Again, it's right after Unforeseen Consequences, and you're just kind of going through and uncovering the damage done to the facility. You find out you're supposed to get to the surface, and you're seeing the remnants of an office and people who used to work there. You got a shotgun. You see sentry guns and head crabs. There's electricity that's zapping people's uh, nut hair off. Glorious. And barnacles just chomping on old, good old bald Kleiner's head. It's enough to make a grown man cry. I love that chapter. However, to be fair, not a ton happens in it. Again, it's, it's along with We've Got Hostiles. It's not, you know, like the most eventful chapter. It's it's atmospheric, it's fun, but it's not incredible, okay? Office complex. And you know what? I'm starting to think. Maybe it's a C chapter. Just to be completely fair. And by the way, just so you all know, I love all these chapters. If I had my say, I'd just put them all in A and S. Okay, but I'm, I'm trying to present some level of tier here, right? I want to put Office Complex in C, even though I think I would probably put it in B. Let's let's go with it, okay? I'll do my final arrangements. All right, power up, power up, Gargantua, right? He's got that welder mitts. And he's got the toe, the unstoppable toe power, uh, where he stomps, and the this red ring of death comes at you. Microsoft and Bill Gates are laughing the whole time, but it's and it can go through walls and stuff, right? And it's invulnerable. And the only way to kill this thing again is an environmental puzzle, just like Blast Pit. Now, is it as good as Blast Pit? No, it, it's more drawn out. Um, the, the cool fact you do hear it stomping around, it's a constant presence, the Gargantua. It's a really cool introduction to this enemy type. Nothing really inventive happens in, in Power Up. In fact, a lot of it, again, is sort of drudgery as you work your way into uh, turning on the generators. Again, the whole chapter's name is Power Up. You're just trying to turn on these generators so that you can, you know, stun gun the shit out of it at the end. And so for that reason, I'll put it, god damn, now I'm starting to rethink everything. <laughs> Once you get deep into the tier list, you're like, am I making the right decisions? I just gotta own it. Is it a B level? Is it a B one? Is it as good as Zen? It's, gotta be, it's a little bit better than Zen. Let's, yeah, let's put it in B, okay? 
not great, not amazing rather. It's good. I wish it wasn't Blast Pit followed up by Power Up. If Power Up had been after Honor Rail maybe, or or in some other spot, like, oh man, it would be really cool if it had been like right after residue processing if they somehow had that environmental change because you don't really have all your weapons at that point and you really don't need all your weapons for power up except for, for the marines but they could account for that that would have been really cool because it would have been a while since the last big boss which was the tentacle and then you don't really need the weapons to take down the guard you just need the environmental puzzle of it it would have been a, a better way to break it up that said not bad power up's cool gargs are freaking awesome it's got to go in b tier okay Apprehension. Apprehension. Yeah. Interesting chapter, to say the least. You lose all your weapons. Um, and you get thrown in a trash compactor. Which is the hopes and dreams of most of my countrymen here in America. That's the best we can hope for. Is to get knocked out and thrown into a trash compactor. Uh, until the darkness hits right <clears throat> but Gordon doesn't want that you know he's still on a mission and it is kind of cool that you get to reclaim your weapons you're in this un industrial sort of part of the facility a lot of platforming that's a little bit sketchy not a great chapter by any means but I put it, I think I'd put it in C tier. I had to forget about Freeman. Well, and I just personally didn't like it as much, that chapter, but I'll keep it there. It's interesting change of pace. It's a surprise, it has that element of surprise. But the janky platforming, you know, yeah, that's kind of where I would have to put it. You know, Gonark's lair. Big ol' sack mama. Mama has got some milk, but she has an STD and it, it, it comes in crabs. Okay. Big ol' Gonark. Uh, this is chapter after Zen, um, and you have a boss fight with the mother of head crabs with a ginormous swinging sack. And that's her only weak point, right? Baby head crabs are really annoying. Um, the the stages of the fight aren't really that, you know, there's not a lot of depth to it, is what I would say. It's just a lot of trying to evade the baby head crabs, staying away from those little douchebags, and then just spamming uh, the gonark sack with your weapons and trying to pick up ammo. Uh, along the way so that hopefully you can blow it open and find the the treasure inside I don't know right but once you do kill it it opens up a teleport that then takes you to the lovely chapter interloper and in my opinion uh, Gonark Slayer is pretty cool um is it great no <sighs> I have to I like Gonark Slayer Better than apprehension. Because at least it's cool, right? Like, you're in a boss fight situation. You know what? Forget about Freeman's going out of D tier. <laughs> Why does this feel controversial? Okay. I'll give it a final look over here in a minute. Okay. L let's go with that for now, okay? <clears throat> uh, surface tension. Okay. Surface tension, legendary chapter. You have the dam. You're finally on the surface for the first time after being cooped up in the facility for what feels like, you know, several, you know, from beginning to end stage pregnancies. It's just a long process and it kind of hurts your tummy and it makes you anxious and it makes you hungry. And now you get to the surface and you're like, whoa, I'm outside. And then everything goes to hell. You know, you're fighting helicopters and the military. But the set pieces of surface tension are what makes it so cool. I mean, you have the big hydroelectric dam sequence, right? You have the minefields that you have to kind of work your way through. You have the giant cliffside vertical sequence, which 
Half-Life games need more of is vertical sequences. It's a great way to break it up. A lot of it's very linear and horizontal, horizontally based, essentially, or, or x-axis. This one's y-axis. There's cliffs. You gotta go down. You gotta go up. You gotta shoot. You get the rocket launcher. Sick music. Surface tension. Is S tier. Surface tension is S tier. Okay. We gotta do it. There's some really cool moments in surface tension, okay? Knee length. Alright. End of the game. Boss fight. Building up to this. And you land and you look up and you're free, man. And it's a ginormous ginormous scarecrow fetus with three arms and a chain link fence under it or whatever that spiky thing that comes out from under it is and it's a interesting boss that shoots electrical things that you have to hide behind all the, the, the spikes and sometimes it'll teleport your ass to different maps that you have to then work your way out of just to get back to the boss fight but the boss fight mechanics itself aren't that great when I look at it from a modern perspective basically if you hide behind the spikes and you shoot the orange sort of energy things that are there's only three of them around it and you just shoot those rapid fire rapid fire and then you just start spamming the the baby then that's kind of really it that's really all you need to do it's it's you know it's not a very hard boss fight now is it a cool boss fight and the idea of it is cool. Yes. So, for that reason, uh, B tier maybe? I mean, it's just cool, right? It's the end of the game, you know? You've worked your way up to it. That portal you enter, that red portal that you take to get into its lair is pretty awesome. I think the fact that it can teleport you to different sub maps is kind of dope. Hardest boss fight ever? No. Best boss fight ever? Definitely not. From the game's perspective and the lore-wise, pretty cool. You know, I have to give it that. You know, it, it earns a, it earns its place. Um, it's definitely above power up. <laughs> and office complex. All right, residue processing. Okay. Following apprehension. Following apprehension. You're finally getting some of your weapons back, and you're combing your way through this trash waste management portion of Black Mesa, avoiding fires and pressure pads. And it's a little annoying, okay, to be fair. Um, there's a room, and tell me I'm not right, where you, you kind of get past those piston things that are trying to smash you, and then it opens up and there's it's this big room with conveyor belts going across, and there's rooms with fire that burn you and it's a big sort of maze of conveyor belts that if you fuck up at all and strafe a little to the left or to the right you'll fall off and have to worm your way back up and it's a convoluted way to get back to the beginning of the conveyor belts just to get through that whole segment that room is annoying i have to say like still like residue processing but like generally speaking if i had to say it's it's an annoying chapter in half-life it's not clear the, the the player direction isn't that clear in a lot of areas of it and the platforming is a little off all right if we, if we got to be frank okay for that reason i will give it a d tier okay now i'm gonna look through this and see if I think I've made any mistakes. Okay, gut instinct. I'm gonna put apprehension in D. <laughs> Just because of the weird platforming. And forget about Freeman does have some cool moments. Uh, I gotta admit, even though it does feel a little forgotten about in certain ways. <clears throat> so we've got hostiles really in B to you. Yeah, I'll put it in B. It's office complex really a C chapter. Uh, no. It's a B chapter, okay? Are there any A chapters that 
you know, that should be A's. Are there any A's to be seen? You know? Let's run with that. That's a fair hierarchy, you know? Now, to say the whole game is b badass, okay? This is if I had to rank chapters based off of which is better, okay? So, I gotta stick with this. I'm gonna run with it. And that is my tier list for Half-Life 1, okay? Again, you can take the tier list yourself. Feel free to leave some feedback. I'm a little scared. But I would say that's probably how I feel, generally speaking, if I had to rank the chapters in Half-Life 1. Now, if you liked that video, let me know. And maybe I'll do it for Half-Life 2. Um, other than that, I have other videos coming up. And I appreciate you guys watching. This was pretty fun to put together. Always wanted to do this. Um, again, just look in the link in the description. And uh, you can find it. So, thanks again for watching. Appreciate all of you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Boo.